Okay, so uh, let's start. Um, this is sort of feedback two. So um, we're going to go and uh, finish up the return ratio generalized analysis, and then I'll give you some examples that hopefully clarify what this is all about. Um, so maybe let me just sort of jot down again kind of what we had in terms of the model. With S in B1 and then the sum. And then the amplifier itself or the controlled source um, with input and output signals. And then we have um, again B2. And from here, drawing the feedback network. And then another summation with kind of a feed forward signal. Okay, and so just some equations to set everything up. So S out was D times S in plus uh, B2 SJ, and then SI was B1 Sn minus H times Sj. And of course, Sj is K times Si. So what we did last lecture is from this structure, we looked at uh, what is the closed loop gain. And it ended up being um, something that can be manipulated into this expression um, plus dH plus um, D over one plus KH. Now the reason why this was uh, neat was because um, when you take a look at this first expression, the way we can uh, write it is as K times um, B2 times um, well, let me just take it out the right, the right way. Um, B1 plus DH over B2 uh, times um, K times B2. So this was A equivalent and this called A0. So A equivalent was this. And then we said, okay, well, uh, this is convenient because in a lot of situations I can't pinpoint exactly what SI and SJ are, but I can figure out what are the S in and S out as components. And then um, this term over here is going to be my SI over S in, given that S out equals zero. And that simply stems from these, from these equations over here. And then I have um, Sj over Si, which is just K. So this is B1 plus DH over B2. And then the last part is S out over Sj. And this is for uh, S in equals zero. So the whole condition ended up being calculating this transfer function. Yeah? What is the subscript on the K? On which one? Um, not oh, A e e K V. EKV. Equivalent. Oh. Uh. Which one? Which Which gain? Okay, so the equivalent gain is essentially the gain of the amplifier open loop, but with the effect of feedback loading, right? So, so this formula basically tells you that. You see that just like from any voltage source, right, um, or any input source that feeds in, there's some, when we did in amplifiers, there's some 
transfer function between the voltage you feed in and the voltage that really drives the transistor because of the input impedance, right? So that's essentially this SI over SI in. SI is the voltage that makes it to this uh, active element. K is an active element. It could be a transistor, it could be a whole uh, amplifier, doesn't matter. Uh, but this first portion analyzes the transfer function from input S in to the actual drive uh, or control voltage for the active element. And then this is just the transfer function of the active element. And then this output is essentially saying as what it takes for that output um, value from the active element to actually propagate to the active to the output of the actual full closed loop amplifier. Yeah. So this is much more generalized than just amplifiers, right? Can we use the same model for any? You can. Is that why it's like signal in instead of? That's right, but signal in, signal out also means current in or voltage in versus current out, voltage out, right? But yes, you, you could. And in fact, um, this is supposed to give you sort of the, the effect of loading of both the sort of input impedance network, um, including the feedback, as well as the output, right? Um, so let's take a look at some examples, maybe it will be uh, kind of clearer. Now, in addition to A equivalent, we need to calculate A0 as well. And A0 is just D. Um, D is defined as, um, as we said, as S out over S in when Sj equals zero, right? And Sj will be zero, so this is equivalent to K being equal to zero. So if we take the, the, the uh, our active source um, or controlled source K and put it to zero, then we're breaking sort of the amplifier as the active element and we're just looking at what happens through the feed forward network. For example, this small k could be a GM in a transistor, right? So that controls the output. And if we set GM to zero, we'll be then calculating whatever is the feed forward, let's say through the Miller capacitance or the Miller feedback. Okay. The third thing we have to calculate to be able to figure out ACL is KH, okay? So KH is the return ratio. And the way we're going to do that is we calculate um, sort of what is the return ratio through this loop when uh, S in is uh, equal to zero meaning when there's no input signal into the loop and we can break the loop. So I'll show you sort of the recipe um, for doing that. So, so the first thing we do in, in the return ratio calculation is uh, sort of have to identify the loop, right? And um, this, also, this also means uh, the controlled source. So then we're going to set all independent sources to zero, meaning, for example, V in will be set to zero, right? Or I in will be open. Um, then we're going to break the loop. Um, well, let's call this SD. So SD is an independent source. 
this is kind of the stimulus in the loop, right? So if we, if we have a loop, we're going to break it, insert here uh, st, and then here, close the loop with whatever impedance we see on this side. All right, so this will be, um, let's say, R, uh, L for the loop. So then you will have RL on this side. So we'll terminate the loop by the impedance seen by ST, which is the independent source. And then once we've done that, um, we'll go and uh, find a return ratio as in this case, so we'll we're injecting SD and we're measuring the return signal on that termination. So it will be SR over ST. Okay, this is a lot of text, but it's basically a recipe. And we're, we're, uh, we're now going to go and look in, through a few examples and uh, do this full, full analysis. So, let's take a look at the one that seems very difficult. Um, so we had VI and we have RI and then R1, R2, and then AV error. All right, so this was our uh, serious shunt. Amplifier. In other words, what was this? Right. So we can write it as, as a small signal model like this. And then um, let's try to calculate all these quantities. Right? So if you first try do the return ratio, then we have several things we have to do. So um, first thing is we have to short the VI. So this is the first step because it's an independent source. And then um, we have to break the loop and sort of analyzing how the signal goes in, VO is here it's fed back through the shunt feedback. So this is the feedback voltage that then subtracts from VI to create the error. So I can break the loop right here and have RI insert V test. So this will be step number two. And then I have AVR, RO, and then here I have R2, I have R1, but I also have to terminate with whatever um, VTCs, right? So in this case, VTC is RI. Okay, and now I can measure 
vr. Okay, let's do it. As the quantity. So my return ratio will be equal to minus vr over vt. And I can just go and calculate that from the loop, right? So uh, this is error. So V error is minus VT. And then I just have a voltage divider, right? Um, RI uh, in parallel with R1 over RO plus R2 plus RI in parallel with R1. And then also I need A. So this is sort of has to do with how we defined previously the types of feedback, right? So in this case, I take, because it's a shunt output feedback, I take VO, right? This is kind of my, my feedback piece. So I know that the signal is feeding back this way. And I can go and break it anywhere I want. I could, I could have broken it right here as well. Right? But then I have to terminate with a different thing, right? Um, so I just picked this location. You can break the loop at any any place you want to create to calculate the return ratio, right? Okay. So. Um, that's right. So if I cut it here, then I could insert VT, V test here, and but then my um, Ri would be this whole thing, right? The R1, R2 plus R1 in parallel with Ri. So same thing. And then I would have to do another voltage divider to get to um, the VE, right? Yeah. So, okay, this essentially ends up being the, the source. So this is the, the voltage divider and then A is from the gain term in the, in the amplifier. Now, in addition to RR, we also have to calculate um, A equivalent and also A0. Right. So whenever you do this type of analysis, this is these three steps you have to do. Calculate the return ratio, calculate the uh, equivalent um, open loop amplifier model, including the loading, and then calculate the feed through path. Okay. So for the, for the equivalent model, this is sort of going to be probably very illustrative to you. So I have to take and figure out, if I look at VI, okay, this is my S in. And then this VO is my S out. Okay, so to construct the equivalent um, circuit for uh, the amplifier, I'll start from V in, and then look at. So I'll I'll have an amplifier somewhere in the middle. And then I have to load, create an input loading network and an output loading network that represents this situation here. Okay, okay first slide. Where for the first part, I was nulling the output. And then for, this, for the output network, I was nulling the input. Because then this whole thing becomes my equivalent open loop amplifier. So maybe we should, right. Loop gain, including um, feedback loading. So if you go take a look at, at this, 
if I zero the output, so s out equals zero, so I ground this node over here, then what is loading the input is ri and then r1 in parallel with r2. Right? So that means that this input goes into the amplifier, there is an ri inside, and then at the output there is r1 in parallel with r2. Okay. This ground here is simply because I set s out equals zero. And s out was the voltage I was feeding back. Okay. And then for the output network, I, I load it with what I see when I when I short the input, right? So what I see from the output is R2 and then R1 in parallel with Ri. Right? So I see R2 and then R1 in parallel with Ri. Now this ground of Ri is because I set my S in to zero. Now, of course, A inside has A times V error. This is V error. And then there is R naught. Right? And so a uh, equivalent is um, you can now go and uh, figure out what VE is as uh, Ri over uh, Ri plus R1 in parallel with R2. And then I have times A, and then times the output. The output is R2 plus Ri in parallel with R1 over RO plus R2 plus Ri in parallel with R1. Notice how I'm writing it in the same way that we wrote the general expression, right? This was, this corresponded to Si over S in for S out equals zero. This corresponded to uh, Si over Sj, which was kind of K. And this piece over here was um, dh over b2 plus b1. And then this piece over here is um, s out over sj for s in equals 0. Notice that these conditions are present here. s out is also this. Right. So that's how you go from formulas to something that is actually in, in the circuit, the way that the loading is manifested. Now, for A0, um, we have to essentially neutralize the controlled source. So that means that we set A to 0, right? And just calculate the feed forward path. So in this case, um, the circuit would then boil down to Ri, this is the input impedance into the amplifier, R1, R2. And then since we, we, uh, we have A equals zero, the voltage, uh, controlled voltage source is essentially a short, and we had just have RO, and then, so, so this is ground because A equals zero. And then our VO is here. Right. So uh, A zero is then um, just um, RO over RO plus R2. That's the voltage divider from here to here, and then we have voltage divider from input to this point over here. Um, 
over um, Ri plus R1. So the total is a uh, equivalent over 1 plus RR um, plus a 0 over 1 plus RR. There is an additional side benefit um, to this approach. And in addition to sort of the exactness, um, the relationship of RR and A equivalent is through um, the feedback factor F. So in other words, RR is um, A equivalent times F. Okay, so this is my display for some reason. Okay. Um, normally, if we had everything ideal in our system, um, meaning input impedance is very is infinite and the output impedance is very is uh, zero, then RR would be equal to, to um, sort of what we called uh, AF, right? Where we could then go and say, well. A is open loop, and then this uh, gain, and then this is feedback, right? But this is true only um, for um, Ri, infinity, Ro, uh, zero, and F unilateral. So in general, when we do this generalized analysis, we don't rely on the fact that RR is A times F if we somehow figure out what F is. Um, but this is going to be true, that RR is the equivalent open loop gain of the loaded amplifier times the F, which is kind of the ideal, ideal feedback factor. So if we go and kind of, um, apply that here by dividing this equivalent, A equivalent with RR, uh, you are going to indeed get the feedback factor um, F, which is equal to uh, R1 over R1 plus R2. Okay, I'll leave this to you uh, to, do, to do at home, but uh, just to prove to yourself uh, that this is indeed the case. Okay, so let's do a few more examples. Um, hopefully, that boosts your confidence in this approach. Um, so we're going to do next one as shunt shunt. Um, Hopefully everyone recognizes this topology, it's like, right, the inverting amplifier. So let's supply the, the recipe, right? The recipe is calculate return ratio, calculate a, a equivalent, A0, and then from that we can do a closed loop, right? So there are three steps. Um, so for the return ratio, um, we ground the input, then we have R1, and then um, the feedback goes this way. So in order to prevent it from going into the amplifier, we got to cut at this point over here. So we'll apply VT 
have R2. Uh, sorry. So cut the loop first, and then the amplifier is here. I apply VT here so that I can drive the amplifier's controlled AV error. Um, and then have RO. And then I need to uh, terminate. And I'll terminate by what I see inside the amplifier, which is RI. And then measure the return ratio as voltage on this node over here, VR. So RR is going to be minus VR over VT. And that's, so VT times A, um, it's A, and then I have uh, R0, and R2, and then I have Ri in parallel with R1 over um, R0 plus R2 plus Ri in parallel with R1. Notice I've lost the minus because VT is minus VE, and then I have A times VE. So I have minus AVT, and then this minus, so uh, they cancel each other. Now, for the equivalent A, um, we have to see when we short the output, what does the input see? as well as what does the output see when we short the input. Right? Again, in the middle, we sort of have the, the amplifier, but then what VI sees is R1, and then as I, as I short the output, I see R2. Two. This ground comes from S out equals zero, and then I go into the amplifier, and then here I have in the amplifier AVE. Obviously, this is RI. Um, VE is here. RO. And then the amplifier is loaded by what it sees when I ground the VI. So then that's R1 in parallel with input resistance of the amplifier and then series with R2. Again, this ground is because S in equals zero. That's how I determined the loading metric. So again, we can go and write um, this. So the, the first uh, transformation is, uh, or trans function is from the input. So we have Ri in parallel with R2 over R1 plus Ri in parallel with R2. Then we have um, times A, or in this case, it's actually minus A, right? Because it's on a minus port. And then times what happens at the output network, which is R2, so this is VI, plus RI in parallel with R1 over RO plus R2 plus RI parallel with R1. Um, 
for a0. Um, we have vi, r1. Then we have ri, r2. This is the output. And then here we have ro. And then this ground is from a equals 0. So we've, we've grounded the control, no, we've nulled the uh, coefficient for the con um, voltage controlled uh, source inside the amplifier, and that's why A equals zero. Okay, so here, A zero is then, um, again, the transfer from here. So it's RO over RO plus R2 and then times Ri in parallel with Ro um, plus R2 over um, R1 plus Ri in parallel Ro plus R2. Okay. And once you go, and then you can compose uh, the closed loop as, again, a equivalent um, over 1 plus RR plus A0 over 1 plus RR. Okay? Easy. It all depends what the loading effects are, right? Uh, if you don't have, um, if you have finite R in and R out, it's usually kind of difficult to determine what is exactly uh, the impact on the on A, right? Because um, the biggest issue is in how. Um, so so there's there's two things, right? A equivalent is determined because from the input to the output, even in the open loop. The feedback network loads the input and the output. So you have some voltage divider or current dividers at, at both sides, right? Not just A as your feed forward gain. Also, that resistive, let's say, feedback has this path over here, which is just a feed forward path through the feedback network, regardless of what the amplifier is doing, right? And that you need to, again, again take into account. So. Without doing this analysis, you can't just apply the idealized F and AF. What I meant was, um, instead of drawing the model for return ratio and doing all that, if you could just find feedback factor F, then you skip doing return ratio and just do the A return ratio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Here, you sort of have an algorithmic approach to, sh to doing A equivalent and RR. And from that, you, from the, the ratio of the two, you can figure out what is your F, right? Um, so that you know for sure. But the other way around, you have to guess what F is and then go, and, right? Yep. But here you can find the exact F pretty easily. Sure, in this case, in this case, yes. But there will be cases where it's not that obvious, right? <laughs> so we'll do now several feedback cases that are not as obvious because they're actually, but they, you know the answer. So it'll be easy for you to kind of relate to them. Those are essentially the emitter or source degeneration or follower. Those are like called implicit feedback because it's happening sort of inside the transistor, right? Um, but you can still apply all these rules and that's kind of nice. You had a question? Um, which loops? So this, the way I drew the diagram, this is like a single feedback loop, right? So it applies to that, but it could be multiple amplifier stages and a single feedback loop. If you have nested feedback loops, that's, you would have to kind of do this in isolation for each one of them, right? Um, okay, let me kind of show you 
in the remainder, like a few examples that are, um, so let's say another, another um, example. I'll write what type it is. Actually, you're going to tell me what type it is uh, here once you see the circuit. OK, so what type of feedback is this? Is there a feedback? Just a single stage amplifier, where's feedback? So what do people think? Hmm? Uh, okay, so in other words, uh, where's the amplifier here, right? Let's maybe answer that first. So where is this block, right, with plus and minus? So let me make it easy for you. Let's say RO is infinite and GMB equal, uh, goes to zero, right? So what does this transistor turn into in that case? Well, you have gate, right? You have source terminal. You have GM times VGS where VGS is here, and then you have the drain terminal. That's pretty much it, right? So if this is now my amplifier here, I'm amplifying, you know, I could say GM is A, VGS equals V error, and so I now have current as the output, right? Current is my output, and then I have voltage as the input, right? But now I feed that into RS. So what am I, um, what am I feeding back as as the as the variable um, in the feedback? Yeah. So if I'm feeding back the voltage. I'm sort of taking it in parallel with the amplifier, right? Because this amplifier is loaded by RS, and then I take this voltage and I feed it back, right? This VO. So what type of feedback is this at the output? Um, shunt. <laughs> it must be the other if it's not, yeah. OK, so it's shunt because we're taking that VO and to the, in order to define VGS, right? VGS is our um, kind of plus minus is VE, right? Okay. W what's happening at the input? If this is VE and this is our feedback, right? VO is our feedback voltage, right? So this is source, and then the gate is here. So this is now our um, VE. Then what kind of feedback do we have at the input? Hmm? <laughs> okay, so we have VI, and then this is our V error. And then this is RS, so this is our V feedback, which happens to be also VO, right? And then we have GM V error here, right? So it's serious because we're v, v in is the sum of VE and V feedback, or in other words, V error is the difference of the two, right? Okay, so 
this is just to tell us sort of what type of uh, um, feedback this is. So serious shunt. Um, OK, so let's calculate the return ratio here. So for return ratio, we null the input. And then we have to break this feedback over here. Right? So if we break the feedback, it's kind of trivial, right? Uh, this is gate, so I apply v test, and then I have rs. I haven't terminated with anything here because what vt sees is infinite um, infinite impedance, right? There's not, nothing. Um, there, so this is infinite uh, resistance, and then I then I have GM times VGS that equals to minus GM VT because VGS is minus VT, and then I'm measuring VR here. So return ratio is. Um, GM times RS as minus VR over VT. Sounds familiar? Okay. So let's take a look at the uh, A equivalent. Um, we have VI. And then What's happening here, we have to load, we have to uh, sort of provide the input loading. That's what we see from the input when we go and ground the quantitative feeding back, which is the, the V out. Right? So if we do that, then the source really becomes uh, ground. So our VGS is now between gate and that voltage. And then we have here GM times VGS. And then here we have RS and whatever we see um, into the input when input is grounded, right? But that's infinite capacitor, so nothing changes there. And so this is VO. So A equivalent is now uh, GM uh, times RS. What is A0? If you null GM, right, you're nulling the, the control uh, source. So if you null GM, there's no current here. What is VO? Zero. So A, zero is zero. So our ACL is A equivalent over one plus RR. And that is going to be GM RS or one plus GMRS. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, it's kind of important to do these examples. Just it's a sanity check, right? And in fact, even though this seems a little bit um, maybe a trivial example in the end, it actually isn't that trivial when you have to think where the feedback is really happening, right? Because it's a single stage. When you have kind of an explicit feedback network, you can sort of see it more easily, okay? Uh, what's happening? Okay, um, if you thought that was easy, let's do the next one. Uh, this is CS with the generation. So very similar. Now VO is here and VI is here. So again, 
the feedback loop is happening here, but we're taking the output on the other side. Right? So what is the return ratio? Okay, I'll let me say that RO is infinity, GMB equals zero, right? So just, there's no confusion there. Does the fact that we have RD affect anything about return ratio in the loop? I see hand shakes, hand, some heads shake, no. Okay, that's right, because the, the, the feedback is not there, right? This is just, the, looking up is just the current source, right? So really you're feeding back this quantity and then that determines the V error, right?